This video presentation discusses the failure analysis of a metal fastener. The fastener was a 2 inch screw that was used inside a building to hold up a wall system. The screw fractured less than one week after it was installed. The failure analysis steps that were performed included visual and stereo zoom microscope exam, scanning electron microscopy and energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy, and metallography and microhardness testing. The observations from step 1 were not remarkable. The results from steps 2 and 3 will be discussed. A scanning electron microscope uses a beam of electrons to image the sample. One use of this microscope is to observe the features on a fracture surface to determine the fracture mode. The information about the fracture features will help determine the failure mechanism. This is a low magnification scanning electron microscope image of the fracture surface. Two different types of fracture features were seen on the fracture surface. Along the outer portion of the fracture surface, there was intergranular cracking, which means that the crack grew along the grain boundaries, which is not desired. Dimpled metal was present at the inner portion of the fracture surface. This appearance indicated that the metal in the inner portion was exposed to a stress that exceeded the tensile strength of the metal. Based on this information, it can be concluded that the crack initiated on the outer surface of the fracture and grew inward along the metal grain boundaries. As the crack grew, the stress in the remaining intact cross section increased until the fastener fractured when the stress exceeded the tensile strength of the intact metal. X-rays from the sample are created when electrons in the beam strike the sample. The energies of the X-rays emitted from any particular element are characteristic of that element so the x-rays can be collected by a detector and used to identify the elements present in a sample and their relative amounts. The x-rays collected from different areas of the fastener are shown here. The top spectra shows the x-rays collected from the fracture surface. The only elements of interest detected here were iron and manganese, which are elements present in steel. The bottom spectra shows x-rays collected from the thread area of the fastener. The main element of interest shown here is zinc. Electroplated zinc is commonly used on steel screws for galvanic corrosion protection. The next step was metallography and microhardness testing. Metallography involves examining the metal's microstructure with an optical microscope. Preparing the sample for metallography and microhardness testing involved cutting the sample, mounting a portion of the sample in a plastic resin, polishing the mounted sample, and etching the sample to bring out certain microscopic features. These images of the etched sample show the metal along the fracture surface and below. This higher magnification image of the metal near the fracture surface shows tempered martensite, which was present throughout the entire sample. Martensite is a metallurgical phase in steel. Its presence indicated that the screw had been through hardened by heat treating. Microhardness testing involves pressing an indenter into the metal surface and measuring the size of the indentation. The hardness is calculated based on the load used to press the indenter and the size of the indentation. The data here shows the hardness as a function of depth, starting at the flank of a tooth. The consistent hardness measurements through the screw thickness indicated that the screw had been through hardened. Based on the data presented here, the conclusions are that the screw failed due to intergranular cracking followed by ductile overload. The intergranular cracking was enabled by hydrogen embrittlement that occurred when the steel screw was electroplated with zinc. During electroplating, hydrogen bubbles form at the metal surface. The hydrogen can diffuse into the metal and onto the grain boundaries, weakening the grain boundaries. The final conclusion is that the root cause of the failure was insufficient or no hydrogen bakeout after the zinc electroplating process. A bakeout is required after electroplating high strength steel. The bakeout involves heating the metal up to 400 degrees for 2 to 24 hours. During this time, the hydrogen is able to diffuse out of the metal. This step must be completed within a few hours after electroplating. Finally, here's a little information about me. I'm the president of Industrial Metallurgists. I have over 20 years experience working on failure analysis and root cause analysis, engineering consulting, and training. Also, I wrote this book. It's about material selection and other materials engineering considerations for product design and manufacturing. Feel free to call or email me if you have any questions about a failure analysis, engineering, or training. Thanks.